So the first thing to say is, you know, we don't know uh, the origin of these videos or, or where they come from. And so we're, we're taking them at face value in what they appear to be showing. And that is the use, obviously, of a very light vehicle traveling very fast and have a very rapid effect uh, against the enemy uh, in, in, the, in, in, in the southern region of Ukraine. And uh, it's all a bit Mad Max. It, it looks very effective. Uh, and um, you know, people are rightly asking, well, is this a model um, and for future combat um, in Europe? And does it suggest something about what we should be doing for our own forces and their modernization? Um, and I, my immediate response to that is that the Ukrainians are fighting an enemy that is poorly trained, poorly led and poorly equipped. An enemy that's lost the initiative and, and has very weak morale which are really on the verge of collapse. And therefore that gives it, the, the Ukrainian army, a latitude to do things that it might not otherwise do. And so it was attacking without artillery support. Uh, there was no Russian artillery in the area. Um, and also, I mean, Ukraine has shown that it has a risk appetite, which is much greater than our own risk appetite. So it was willing to, um, uh, cross open ground without protected vehicles. And, you know, that could have ended in disaster, but it didn't. Um, but because they were able to move so quickly, they gained the initiative and were able to seize ground. And that, they had a shock effect in short, uh, which um, led us to believe that the Russian troops in the area were routed. And we have seen in some of these videos, there's one where the Russian troops appear to be surrendering to uh, Ukrainian forces. And some of the, the, the tactics appear to be quite NATO-like. Do you think uh, we are seeing the impact of training that Ukrainians have had from British and other NATO countries? I think we are. You know, there's a discipline um, and process that's very evident in the way the U Ukrainians are operating. And that is proving to be very effective. Uh, they're not always as professional as we might like them to be, but on the whole, they're much more impressive than the enemy they're fighting. And so, yes, I think we are seeing the effects of, of training, uh, but also we're seeing the effects of morale. These are people who are fighting for their country whereas the Russians don't know why they're there or why they're fighting and don't want to be there. Where do you think the Russians are going wrong, as it were? Why has there been this turn um, in favour of the Ukrainians? Well, their tactics have not been very good from the, the start. And, and uh, as I said, it's, it's about poor planning, poor, poor leadership and poor equipment. We always thought that Russia was the primary threat uh, in Europe. And, and we, you know... We've, um, we had a very high opinion of their capabilities. In reality, we found that their tanks, IOVs, have not been as good, as, as well protected, um, or as capable as, as we thought they were. Uh, and they've been very easily uh, destroyed by the Ukrainian forces. So um, not having the capabilities that we thought that, that they had has really limited their effectiveness in combat. And we've given the Ukrainians very good equipment both the javelin and other anti-tank weapons, but also artillery. And that's uh, enabled us, enabled the Ukrainians, sorry, to comprehensively um, outperform them on the battlefield. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.